My fiancé invited his ex-situationship for our wedding behind my back. Original post, October 17, 2024. I, 23F, am getting married in January and just found out my fiancé, Mark, 25M, fake name, invited his old situationship to our wedding without consulting me. For context, me and Mark met on a dating app two years ago after he broke up a relationship. To be honest, it's quite confusing what he and Tracy, 22F, had. They met because of a mutual friend and started to develop feelings for each other. Mark told me they never dated and slept together, but it was more than friendship. Until today he keeps her love letters, gifts and talks about her. Tracy and him tried to stay in contact after the breakup, staying friends but she ghosted him after finding out we started to date. From what I saw in her social media, she's in a relationship, so I'm not worried about her trying to get with my fiancé again. They haven't been in contact for two years, but he still has her number and email. I found out about him inviting her after I checked again our guest list and finding her name. I know Tracy is not a threat to our relationship, but Mark inviting her behind my back makes me feel bad about our whole wedding. He told me he doesn't feel anything for her, yet he made sure to send her an invitation. This is probably me being insecure, but my fear of him not getting over her is slowly creeping inside my heart. I don't want to lose him. Relevant comments. Commenter 1, he's probably not over her, especially since they were never a thing. For him, she might be the one that got away. If I were op, I would have a very serious talk with him. Oop, I don't get why he is not over her especially if they were never a thing. From what Mark told me, he was the one who didn't wanted a relationship since Tracy just started life. Commenter 2, he went behind you back to invite someone whose love letters he's kept? The fact he didn't talk to you about it is a. If having her there is more important to him than you being comfortable at your own wedding then you might need to postpone the wedding. She might not be a threat to your relationship but it sounds like your fiancé's feelings are a threat. Oop, I don't know why he is not over her even after two years of no contact. I know Tracy is part of his past, his story but it's been such a long time. Commenter 3, tell him you don't want her there and that's final and he better rescind it or you'll have to rethink the marriage because starting a married life by going behind your back is a no-no. TBH you need to not stubbornly hold on to someone you can't trust, and you can't trust someone who does shit behind your back. Oop, her going to the wedding doesn't make me uncomfortable since I know she won't do anything. The problem is my fiancé and the fact he invited her to the wedding without notifying me. If Mark wanted her there, fine, but I just hate the fact he didn't told me beforehand and it's making me think he lied about getting over her. Commenter 4, why do you keep saying I know she won't do anything? If you can't trust him not to do anything with an old fling you should not be getting married. Oop, Tracy has a boyfriend and is expecting. Also, she was the one who blocked him everywhere after finding out we were dating. Update number 1, October 19, 2024. After reading the comments and talking with some friends, my heart finally understood Mark never really got over Tracy. In the beginning, I was in denial, but I went out with Tom, 24M, his best friend of years to understand about what really happened between them. From what he told me, Tracy and Mark met because of some friends in common. She just got into the university and was 17 at the time, while Mark was already almost graduated. They stayed friend for two years and feelings started to blossom. Mark was already working while she was still in college. He only wanted to formally date her after her graduation. So it was never a thing, even though they shared love letters, gifts and shared almost every holiday together. Tom told me everyone from their old friend group thought they would marry since they were so sweet together. So, their breakup was really unpredictable. Tracy was the one who broke up with Mark due to their religious values not lining up, as she wanted to save herself until marriage. In the end, they decided it was better to go separate ways and maybe try again after a few years. But after me and Mark started to date, Tracy realized that it was pointless to wait for him and started to see other people too, so she blocked in everything, except email just to have a clean beginning. In the end, I finally realized Mark is just hopeful that Tracy would come back to him due to their talks of trying again after a while. It honestly hurt so much as I loved him so much. I still didn't confronted him since I'm still shaken up, but I don't know if this marriage will happen. I am going to update once I calm down and confront him. Top comments. Commenter 1, this sucks but at least you found out before you ended up married to this guy. Commenter 2, I'm sorry y'all. It does sound as though your fiancé hasn't moved on. You deserve someone who can't breathe without you. And I hope you can find it with your next partner. Commenter 3, I'd write down all your feelings and thoughts in a letter to him. Explain what Tom said to you. Tell him it aligns with him keeping the love letters, trying to stay in contact, and bringing her up even two years later while in a relationship with you. Tell him you love him enough to let him go. I'd also reach out to Tracy and ask if your fiancé has been talking to her at all. You never know if there is more to the story, of if she has moved on from him. From what you wrote, it doesn't seem like he moved on from her. He shouldn't be inviting someone he still has romantic feelings for to his wedding. That's cruel to you, his future wife, and Tracy, as well. If I was her, I'd feel like he was trying to shove his relationship in my face. I'd be offended he even invited me. Also, will this be his first time seeing her in two years? For some reason, I seriously doubt it. However, if it is, that's pretty diabolical. It's like he is using your wedding and you as a prop in their love story. Does he think he's the male lead in some K-drama? At the very least, give him the letter. If he wants to meet up ask to see his phone. 
go through his deleted messages and sent emails along with his trash folder. I think there's more to the story. Were you supposed to walk down the aisle and just see Tracy there? He's honestly an ah, and a selfish one at that. Update number 2, October 25th, 2024. It's been a while since the last update and I'm here to announce the wedding has been called off. My parents are the one cancelling everything for me, it's like I returned to my childhood when mom and dad had to solve my problem. I confronted Mark after talking with Tom and made him aware of everything I've been dealing. His reaction at the beginning was dismissive and was almost as if he was trying to escape from this situation. In the end, Mark said he never loved someone like Tracy because it was pure and innocent. She reminded him that not everything is about carnal desire and in the darkest moments of his life, Tracy was like a sunlight. Hearing the man you love admitting how much he loved another woman is so hurtful. During the talk, I started to cry, bawling my eyes out. Mark had the audacity to say he loves me, but it's a different kind of love. I asked why he invited her to our wedding and he was speechless. Why he had to throw away our future for something in the past. This hurts so much. Mark told me he knew Tracy didn't block him on email, since he was the one who helped her get her first job and a lot of professional stuff was also involved. This is how he was able to send her our wedding invitation, but he meant no harm. When I asked what he meant with this, Mark just said he wanted to make her watch us together and realize what she lost because he was hurt that Tracy was pregnant and not married. The moment Mark mentioned about Tracy's pregnancy, a red alarm started to echo in my head. How did you know about her pregnancy? You said she blocked you everywhere. I could see panic in his eyes as he started to stutter. In the end, I made him give me his phone and I found out more than five accounts to stalk Tracy. My stomach felt sick and the urge to vomit was overwhelming. In the end, I decided to call off the engagement since he was a creep. Mark threw himself on the floor asking for forgiveness and he loves me, just in a different way compared to Tracy and was just hurt that she gave herself to another man while he begged her countless times for sex. This made me feel even more disgusted with him because he felt entitled to her virginity and body. I left without taking even a bag with me. Everything is just too much. I can't believe I spent two years loving a stalker, a man-child. Oh, I also told Tracy everything and his accounts. I don't know if she saw my messages but I hope she does. The jealousy I once felt for her transformed into pity as no woman should go through what Mark has done. Mark wants to meet up with me and doesn't want to break up, but I'm just so tired. Relevant comments. Commenter 1. I am so sorry. This really sucks. You should have your parents get your stuff and you should stay as far away from Mark as you can. If he is capable of stalking Tracy, he is capable of stalking you. Make sure that there are security cameras at your parents' house and you should block him. The only bright side is that you found this out before you married him. Oop. I'm thinking about leaving the US and going to another country. Social media are not for me, so it's harder for him to stalk me. I don't have anything of great value in Mark's house, except some clothes and makeup, so it if he throws it away. Oop on Tracy's ethnicity and her own. Oop. Tracy is Asian while I'm white. Ends. Update number 3, October 26, 2024. I think this is my last update, since I've already met up with Tracy and talked about what happened. Me and her met at a cafe and in the beginning I was really nervous, as I didn't know what was her reaction because her reply was only hi, let's talk over a cup of coffee. When I was waiting for her, I could feel my back sweating and overall, lots of emotion. Tracy arrived and I finally understood why Mark was so obsessed with her as she is definitely one of the most beautiful women I saw. She's pretty on the pictures, but personally she looks better. Tracy said hello to me and asked if I'm willing to go to her house to talk, since being outside for too long makes her really tired. We ordered some coffee to go and it was super awkward. So now let's talk about what she told me. First of all, she apologized for being the reason why now I'm single which I assured her is not her fault. Tracy said she received the invitation, but was simply not interested in participating in our wedding as she was already in a happy relationship and is pointless to see a person from the past. With the story Tom and Mark told me, I got curious and asked about them staying friends as it sounded like she wanted to stay with him after the breakup and it's the polar opposite of her behavior. Tracy was extremely uncomfortable with this question, but still explained to me why she said that. In the beginning, she was really in love with Mark because he was her first love. She described him as a protector, someone trustworthy, handsome and kind as he always showered her in gifts and travel. Everything was fine and sweet, but over time, Mark Mark started to beg her for sex so much to the point of her pretending to be sick just to avoid him. She just didn't want to sleep with him and had some sort of blockage, like a sixth sense telling her to not do this. She was sick and tired about all of this and used the fact that her parents are extremely religious to justify why sex was off the chart. This lead to a fight, which Mark never told me and them breaking up. But two weeks after, they started to talk again as she felt in debt with him as he helped her get a job in a prestigious company and he spent a lot of money on her with trips, foods and presents. One of the gifts was a Rolex for her 18th birthday, which made me me mad since he never spent so much money on me. So when Tracy found out me and Mark were seeing each other, she felt relieved and finally had a proper reason to block him everywhere since he was still sometimes hinting about them sleeping together. In the end, I told her in the entire relationship, Mark would sometimes talk about her and in the beginning it was kind of weird, but I just brushed it off since she was part of his story. 
Oh, I also talked about Mark's numerous accounts and in the beginning she didn't believe me, but I showed her the accounts I knew, which was creepy since they all had female names, followers and pictures. All of them looked real. Her account is public, so I asked Tracy to make it private. She made a new account with her Korean name and deactivated the old one. We had fun and became friends. She is a really sweet person and I saw how her boyfriend treated her like a queen. I'm happy she found love and got rid of Mark. Relevant comments. Commenter 1. Sounds like everyone dodged the bullet that was Mark. Oop, it wasn't a bullet. It was a nuclear bomb. Commenter 2. I really hope she takes Mark's stalking seriously. It's very alarming the stuff he has been doing. I'm genuinely afraid for this woman. He's become obsessive and that can't lead to anything good, especially if he starts spiraling after your breakup. Commenter 3, I'm so glad you told her. Pregnant women with crazy stalkers get killed at an alarming rate. I can't imagine how awkward and awful and difficult that whole situation and conversation must have been for you. I'm really proud of you for talking to her and showing her all their accounts so she could protect herself and have all the information. Now, at least whatever else she chooses to do and whatever else happens, happens. You know you've done what you could to protect another vulnerable woman. That speaks huge. Volumes to character and personality and general grace slash class overall. You are going to find someone amazing who truly loves you and matches that upbeat, dignified and character driven vibe you have to the best benefit. Smile I just know it. I hope you post an update on 3 years madly in love and hugely successful. Smile.